Aatrox, which had gotten nerfed on A16, and then play counter pick tanks into it. So we've yeah. seen Poppy from both these guys into the Aatrox, as well as the Mundo for Fallen Bandit in game five. Uh, and so it feels like both players are more than happy to give up power picks for the opponent and, and get counter picks instead. So where that goes from there is really weird. Does it lead to a, a Aatrox chicken game? Do they completely ignore <laughs> Aatrox from here on out and focus on tanks to kind of play more through those bot lanes that it does feel like is the focus in this matchup as well as the mid lane? Tanks would definitely favor Wiggly. He's been on Trundle quite a bit, so he'd love to absorb some stats if the game goes a little later. We'll see how those jungle pools actually are recognized between the both, te both teams, because they're not that much of a mix-up. A lot of Gragas has won a Kindred for uh, Sven Skarin in his plays, and then it's Trundle, Gragas, Camille, Grave, so a bit more of that aggressive side from Wiggly. Rise, Varus being banned out, and our final CLG Academy ban as we get into picks. 10 seconds left for CLG. The Akali is up right now. Yeah. We saw Golden Gloop put some Kaisa. games onto it, and with the Kaisa ban, that does, yeah, Ooh. there it is. I was typing it up. The Instalock Akali by Golden Gloop. Not shocked. He uh, picked that right away as soon as that champion came out in the uh, regular season of Academy and put on a really impressive performance, showing off a lot of intricate decisions that you can do with the champion. Yeah. And what was funny is it was immediately followed by Tuesday playing the champion, who clearly had not put as much time in. And then when I talked to him, he said that was his second game of Akali ever. Yeah. And so here it is, those two guys who kind of premiered the pick for the North American scene are once again, their first matchup gonna be playing with it. I can't wait. It, it kind of plays into that role that yes, a, a Golden Glue wants that KDA stat. He wants to go aggressive and he's ready for the perfect execution. We get Wiggly on a jungler really of his choice here. So that's gonna be great for CLG to start off in that jungle with Braum, his first pick. Yep, so second most played jungler for Wiggly, assuming that Gragas goes mid lane, and then the Braum does feel like the strongest support in the game right now, with yeah. a lot of nerfs that came through onto, onto some of the other supports. Uh, Rakan got a base health nerf, you saw Tom Kench's W cooldown, and both those uh, players do kind of prioritize those style champions, mm -hmm. but Fang being the slightly more aggressive player, going back to the Alistar, of all things. Interesting. A little pop and stop as they bring the Kyle into play. They'll have some good defense on that bot side too, so Cloud9 can't be dove too early in this game as we know CLG, especially when they're on blue side, will hound you on your red bottom side, diving you level three, level four with Wiggly over and over. Yeah, see what they can do now. There's that trundle pick. You said it was gonna be coming in with somewhere, all the somewhere. tanks. And uh, Galio as well kind of showing up as the, the definitive Expected. Akali answer. Uh, you know, does not want to fight her early, is able to build a bit of a health pool, has a lot of defensive mm -hmm. skills, and then also a lot of AOE, no targeted abilities on the entire kit. Maybe Sans his uh, passive auto attack, but you're right. able to deal with the Shroud relatively well that Akali will drop down, and then you just kind of focus more on wave clearing and countering out her aggression. It does feel decent to play against Galio. You're not instantly blasted out there. We'll probably see Tuesday on the chicken skin, playing true to his name. Just, I don't love the chicken skin, gotta say. It's fun. It's it's fun. <laughs> Throwing out the, the wings. Uh, Ezreal Tristana as they absolutely hammer the bottom side of the map with this second phase of bands. And Swain goes in there too and still favored towards that bottom side from what we've seen from CLG. Yeah, we'll have to see what they get forced onto here. I mean, the Ash is still up. And you think C9 might ban that one out because it does feel like the bit yeah. of the standout with how many other bands happen. You don't want to give up a power pick and then be forced to play something suboptimal into it, so we'll see if they end up banning out one more marksman and really push both players down the pool. Is there an Ash there? Is he play it? No, the they take out the Mundo, finally. I think it went so far down, we forgot about it, but yes, they do take it out. Ash is the one that's picked up, so a lot of initiation Ooh. there coming through, and possibly Quinn gets hovered out. There's a few more Keith can pick here, and we'll see what he decides to lock. Quinn is a really interesting one because we've seen Sneaky being able to bust that one out yep. the LCS, and that's kind of what uh, that bot lane sense prefer. And it's a really strong pick with its global mobility and can maybe help 1-3-1 one, one if you're trying to do that with the Akali Assassin. Uh, the GP blind as well. I feel like it'll go up whatever Fallen Bandit can still put on the board. You have Ken and Poppy Lucian, Darius, he's played up there, and will be a lock-in now for Keith as we do have that gang playing. So last pick is given to CLG Academy's top laner here in the first game of the series as Zaya is locked in for Keith. So still a pretty strong marksman, didn't go quite for the... Uh, Easy. Oh yeah, Cho'Gath insta-lock in there for Fallen Bandit. Not really one of his top plays either, but 
good tank to put in the top lane. Yeah, able to scale very well throughout the game. That's one of the concerns a lot of tanks face when they go up against GP is he just gets out of control with his damage and you can't pressure him. You still can't really pressure too hard with the Cho'Gath pick, yep. but you uh, are still able to kind of scale up with him. You'll never 1v1 him in a side lane, but you can't control him decently well. All right, so let's break down that match we're kind of looking at here, Mark. Wiggly versus Svens Garen. Trundle on that. Trundle versus Gragas now. What are we expecting from these two, given their lanes, but also given their playstyle? Does feel like it's going to be a fair amount of mid action. We highlighted uh, Golden Glue's success against Tuesday, all split long. You add in that's probably the most aggressive lane on the map right now. You add in some junglers who can make some early moves. Uh, Trundle is actually fairly strong into Galio because you can block his one escape spell. Yep. So we'll see. I mean, this looks like a potentially a mid-focus game coming in for both teams at the start of the series. I was saying there's a lot of kill participation coming from Cloud9 side there. 72% kill participation in the mid lane for Golden Glue to Tuesday's 60. Still up there, but you could tell Golden Glue game after game is finding that aggression from Spence Garen in his back pocket and it put his KDA up to 6.4 to Tuesday's 3.7, so just kind of pound for pound by the numbers there. CLG has to be focused on that mid lane as well to keep it safe. Galio should be the good pick for Tuesday as it's one of his wheelhouse selections. And we're about to be on this rift for the best of five here for your Academy Worlds. Cloud9 Academy versus CLG Academy. And we are on the rift. Super excited to see how this plays out. CLG Academy, like you heard them saying, was actually the team that beat C9 Academy at the start of the season. It'd be pretty fitting for them if they were able to find the victory at the end of the season as well. But C9 are the, the favorites in a lot of people's eyes. 14 win regular season, pretty yep. impressive. And then uh, also the fact that, you know, C9 was, was a favorite last split as well, and they ended up losing mm -hmm. in the semifinals to FlyQuest. And this is a bit of a concern, I would say, for the C9 squad is the, is the idea of stage readiness, uh, something that it feels like as great as Golden Glue and Keith have been in yep. scrims and in solo queue, you, you know they're talented, you see it every day, but when it came to playing on stage over the previous couple uh, splits and years, it doesn't always manifest itself. And so I think this is a really important match for them, not just... Uh, Obviously, you want to be the first Academy World Champions, but also just because it's going to be a, a big part of their career. And Golden Glue has already kind of turned that narrative around a little bit with sure. the success that he had on the main roster. And CLG have quite a bit of work to do for themselves. You have to wonder how such a young team feels coming in. We actually have Avali with Exogen on the sideline for a quick talk. Thanks, guys. CLG Academy is kind of the underdog coming in today, going against the Titans that are Cloud9. So how does the team feeling? Uh, we're actually feeling pretty confident. We beat them the first week pretty convincingly when they had three LCS players. Uh, we kind of trolled the second week. So I feel like it's gonna be a pretty fair uh, best of five going on here. And coming into this series, what do you think is the biggest, biggest weakness of Cloud9 and how are you guys gonna take advantage of it? Uh, for me personally, they've been swapping players in and out through the academy, like, trying to get stuff like situated. Um, we've been together the whole split, so I think we have that advantage on them. Well, best of luck to you. Back to the casters. So feeling that the switching is a little more turmoil in the consistency to C9 strategy, and that's where Cut CLG can kind of get in. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the bot lanes a little bit, we said, you know, Keith has had to play with three supports just this split alone. Yeah. As opposed to Otto and Phil have been together for the better part of two years now. And so you have to think that synergy is going to be a little bit of an advantage. As well as you heard the desk talking about losing Smoothie, a very vocal player, yeah. can, can impact the team synergy, not just the lane. Absolutely. Thank you to X Sojin and Avali for a little bit of insight there. As really, there's so much that can happen in this game that we don't know. If kind of CLG gets ahead, everybody's expecting C9 to do well, but can CLG control that lead? Are they able to push forward against the number one team in the league this season? We will find out. It could be a long five games. Oh, yeah. If there's anything we've seen in Academy, it's that we do tend to have close series. So mm -hmm. hopefully, we get another five game one here today. Absolutely. And, uh,. You know, you heard Medio saying he, he thinks this is closer than the, the general community perception. Mm -hmm. He played against C9. He felt like he was able to get leads. He was able to make things happen and get his team ahead. They were not able to close them out. But, you know, he thinks CLG might be able to do that a little bit better. And, and that's why the series is not as decided as people think. Already a little love for the mid lane as Wiggly hovers. Gets a little poor award as he makes his way out. Tuesday's hanging, hanging bot side. As they come this way, nobody's down here, making sure Wiggly has a bit more protection as well in this scenario. 
Sanskaren just kind of hovering around that mid lane as Wiggly departed, but just no action yet. Yep, I mean, Tuesday's doing a good job hovering down to the far side of the map, so Sven, or excuse me, Wiggly being able to go from the bot side and clear out the entire bot jungle, he knows, obviously, Sven Skarin's not down there, so Tuesday plays the bot side of the map where I am, and I just cleared out. You will not get ganked if you do that, and there you see the fact that Tuesday doesn't care. <laughs> Trundle's hovering around, and Golden Glue also knows that and respects the fact that I should not chase into that brush. Golden Glue is such a patient player as well. You see him, obviously, you want to get damage down. There's pretty much no kill pressure just yet. But when he knows there is kill pressure, there's kind of zero hesitation for him. We see that in his ability to get his solo kills over the course of the split. Nice little headbutt coming in on a level three. Lockdown as well on to Phil and Auto. Teleports are coming in from mid and top lane. This is going to be bad for Cloud9 if they can't get the first kill and stop the damage from coming in. Auto oh stays alive with a few more hits, but he goes down finally to Keith. And they're going to lose Fence Garen as they turn it around. Keith cannot fire in enough damage. And that is going to be a three for one in favor of CLG. That CLG coordination and synergy coming up. Big pre five minutes. It ends up with all five members in the bot lane. Double TP coming down, and that is what gives them the ability Ooh. to turn that fight around. Also, have to give props to Otto. Nice pathing and footwork here yeah. to keep himself alive. And Phil as well, getting the stack down on Keith, making sure they get that stun. He realizes we're not getting out, so we have to turn and go back in. And he starts committing onto Keith, and a great flash by Otto buys him enough time to get that stun. And then here comes Tuesday with the double knockups, as well as the Cho'Gath, the taunts. There's Still be able to get the damage down to finish auto, but he's done his his work already. He's kept them Absolutely. around and baited them long enough to get that three kills back in their favor. Uh, does come at a price though, as both mid and top lane start falling pretty heavily behind in CS. Uh, but it does give them their gold back, and the gold lead is slightly in CLG's advantage at the end of all that. I was wondering as we came out of that replay what the scoreboard on the bottom would look like in inventories. And you are right, CS is down. But back to farming in the lane should slow that bleed now. What can be worked off of this? No real forward wards are placed in a fight like that. It's instant to the lane. You don't gain too much ground overall from vision on the map. So that's what we're going to see C9 doing here to say, all right, let's slow down if they do get a bit of a snowball. Yeah, it's definitely a, a situation that, while it's great for CLG to turn that around, does obviously come at the cost of that CS, like we said, which also... Yeah. Often means you're down a little bit in tempo as well. Everyone has to recall back to base, shop, and run back to lane while everyone else is kind of staying out there. So they do end up giving a C9 a window to move out from the bot lane, get some wards down, and make sure next time they go aggressive, just how many people can actually make their way down there. Yeah, interesting choice for what, what kind of money they were left to back with there as Otto goes down. Zerker agrees first for him on those three assists. Unfortunately, didn't get any kills there. And to the BF sword, so they might want to watch the damage in the lane currently as they continue to trade. Yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting to see. Actually, a lot of people would say end up with the worst of the two items, uh, right. but it's still not too bad because against the feathers and it gives you the ability to potentially walk out of them. You right, against you just get that extra movement. Yeah, some poke-oriented champions, the boots early on is, is not bad. You sometimes see it against things like Avaris. Yep. I still think Otto would have preferred a BF sword. <laughs> or actually, I guess you're not going to go BF sword. You're going to go Bork first, Ash. So I True. stand corrected. True. He gets his attack speed in. Also get the slows down. If they get into lane, keep the tag done. Those teleports are halfway to being up again for Fallen Bandit and Tuesday as things kind of fizzle out around the map to re uh, reference where those kills went. Top lane, mid, and jungle, and possibly, again, CLG are about to pick up a few more kills on that scoreboard. A nice cannon barrage, but they're able to walk out of it right <laughs> Oh my god. Wiggly drinks Shiro under the table for a final kill with the cast, and they just walk him out of lane on that. He'll be able to teleport back, but CLG is still making moves early. Yeah, just kind of lobs that final cask up, <laughs> saying, you know what, this has gone on long enough. C9, though, always the active team on the map as soon as they see the jungler committed up to the top side. Move down to the bot lane. Oh, no! Oh, Jiro! He teleports back, and I say it might be an easy teleport for him. A huge wave in front of the turret as he tries to set his, no set his barrels up. There's it looks like they'll be safe here. Auto says we're going top because they're getting their turret pushed. They need to trade immediately as Cloud9 comes out of the base swinging. CLG have to react. Actually, a really nice reaction there by CLG. At first, I thought it was nice that they got the chunk onto Shiro, but with no damage, there's no way they can take yeah. that push. And I saw the TP coming in. I was like, who's the TP left up? And of <laughs> yeah, course, that's what I had to look for. There it is. It's Auto able to trade out the turrets that they had to sack in the bot side. I haven't actually done it yet. Shiro might be able to defend. And, uh,. Nice play by C9 being able to answer the aggression and actually come out ahead. 
very mobile global team now seeing these three teleports across the map for CLG. Slightly mismatch, but the big tanks can be Brass Bash Brothers together if they need to. Reset and see this again. So the aggression top kind of actually resulted in pressure around the map. Yep. The Predator Gragas, <laughs> swiftest big man you ever seen, comes flying in there, stuns him up, cuts off Shear's escape. Shear doesn't bother flashing, knowing that they can follow easily. And Wiggly, after running for a little bit, says, I'm, my Predator boots are worn off. I'm done running and just finishes him with the ultimate. And we see CLG on the tail end of that play actually getting the uh, turret for themselves, so still with the gold lead. Cloud9, a little bit of an easier path to get here. We find themselves playing this uh, against FlyQuest. CLG kind of having to push through 100 Thieves and TLA. Getting that warm up on the way in. We'll see if that kind of gave them any more, not advantage but an idea of how they really wanted to play coming in against Cloud9. They had time to look at it, but C9 had time to watch all those games of CLGs. Yeah, I think this would be an amazing run for CLG if they actually pull this off. They start in the quarterfinals as the three seed. Yeah. They have to win that. And then a team that they had horrible record against. You heard 100 Thieves Rikara talking about the fact that he had never lost to CLG Academy. Right. They go in, they beat them. They go up against TL, the two seed who they also struggled with in the regular season. They beat them. And then if you beat the number one seed, I, I don't know if there was a tougher <laughs> bracket for CLG to run. And so that's True. kind of really putting their stamp down as the best team in Academy if they're able to uh, to win this one as well. Yeah, made it to the playoffs with basically have to run a gauntlet. A little pressure onto Golden Glue in the mid lane as he is nice and charged up. Doesn't have to go in for the fight though. Uh -oh. A quick hit, however, as Wiggly is forced to flash out of this. Tuesday could be on the end. They get in front with one execution from Golden Glue on the Justice Punch, but almost does himself dirty and goes down to the turret damage. They have to be a little wary of how far they go here. Yeah, slightly over eager by Golden Glue there going for the flash ultimate. The first part of Akali's ultimate does stun, but it's a very short stun. Yeah. Less it's a quarter or a half second, so. It's like a uh, made you look. Yeah, so Tuesday comes out of that stun and instantly flashes over the wall, and then Golden Glue doesn't have his flash to follow, so not able to find that kill as well as the stopwatch. Uh, coming in by Wiggly baiting it. And it was almost a turnaround by Tuesday, but too many CL C9 members there to get chased out. Still, uh, both teams looking for things in the mid lane and getting turned around. Stormraiser finished up for Keith. He's at a pretty good clip with that kill under his belt. Helps him at least finish one core item. We see the boots now finishing up into that Blade of the Rune King from Cutlass. Same thing coming out of Golden Glue as well as he starts to build up here. Magic resistance so he can take Tuesday on over and over again in these fights. 2-0 though for Wiggly. He has started off very much the way he's wanted to on Greg. And that's kind of what you would expect by CLG Academy. He is kind of the catalyst for the early game. He is. And a bit of a leader for them in terms of just the overall aggressive nature they play with. Hello. It's such a frantic fight. It's like one taunt, disappear in Trout, come back out, try to Justice Punch. It's like there's a lot to be missed in that fight. It's kind of a lot of hit confirming in a way. Yeah. Once you land the Justice Punch, you know you can throw the exactly. Q in that exact spot. But until then, you have to taunt and then see if they pop out. And then that's where you Justice Punch. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of variables in this. Oh, yeah. A few attacks, gets his electrocute as we see Hawkshot fly across the map. They know that Ash is towards the top side, obviously clearing out waves as Keith continues to do a little janitorial duty, cleaning up that top lane. Still waiting for kind of Shiro to get a cannon barrage on and engage. Something that goes down, anything actually in that sort, but I feel like Cloud9 and the team are kind of waiting for CLG to say, yes, there's a dive, but that might be a mistake. Yeah, it's, it's tough, I think, for, for both teams to kind of play these games out. We often try and look at how similar the comps are, and this is a time where the comps could not be more different. You have four tanks and an for Ash, sure. essentially, versus an Assassin, a uh, carry top who wants to, just all of them want to be focusing on killing the Ash, and the question, will CLG be able to protect her while she puts yeah. out the damage to chew through the relatively squishy side of C9? Sven Scaren, yeah. of course, will get very tanky, and Alistair will have his ultimate, but still not quite the true tanks with tons of lockdown CC like you see on CLG Academy side. I'm liking the pick of the Gragas more and more, especially against the Akali. You try to get her into her shroud and you're like, okay, cask. Are, are, you drinking yeah. are you drinking tonight or not? Hopefully get her popped out. It's tough though. I mean, Akali has a lot of 
uh, outplay potential oh, for her yeah. kid. If she throws her E down into the shroud, you cast her out. She recasts the E to go right yep. back in Boop. there. I mean, finds it. You gotta keep track of a lot of things when playing as and against the Kali. So Cloud Nine trying to put something on the menu that would give them an advantage, or at least say, "Hey, we're in the driver's seat for X lane." Shelly has other things in mind, however. He's like, Dylan, I'm not on the menu. What are you talking about? <laughs> Slight aggro to Phil kind of mess that up for Cloud9. It's 22.5 pretty much across the board here. Four to one. It's, C9 has done a great job at moving around the map, moving around the fights that CLG is trying to put on the rift. And this is definitely a time where despite what C9's comp looks like, I don't think it really wants to be splitting too much. The other team has Galio plus triple TP versus the single TP. Yeah, they can get to you instantly. Yeah, Kali's going to have a tough time splitting against that. So this probably will mostly come down to how 5v5s work. Um, and luckily for C9, despite how we're talking about their team comp is a little squishier, they still have Sven Scare into walk in and face check things. So I think they still have all the boxes ticked of a standard team comp. Yep. It just plays the fights differently uh, than CLGs. Now I'm interested to see that they're kind of avoiding fights but trying to take objectives. What this Fallen Bandit and Shiro matchup is going to turn into on the bot side, how the teleports play out with Cannon Barrage, and does Fallen Bandit still just become his Cho'Gath esque Mundo? and start taking over a lane of the game. Definitely a different build where he's playing for the team, going for the Righteous Glory first. That's a good point. It's a pretty common item first, I should say, but sometimes people prioritize being a little bit more greedy in lane as we see some more of this <laughs> hit and run trading pattern in the mid lane. Uh, but Fallen Bandit against GP knows that this is going to come down to team fights, and so he says, I'm doing just fine in the lane. I'll take the, my slight CS deficit, yep. and I'll uh, prioritize an item that gives us the ability to engage a little bit easier. He's going to use it for his own good here in a fight. I love the Vorpal Spike level up, or change, I should say, on Shogath. Using that to careful. do a bit of damage. Yeah, he's definitely taking the barrel loss here. If Shiro needs to get out, he'll also be able to use his W to get oranges for safety. And now the Roman from Golden Glue. Remember those teleports are up on the side of CLG if they do need to help their teammate. But they could be stopped in the mid lane in another fight as we're going cross map with all of these bows. Fallen Bandit's going to fall. Sven Garen cannot get a tag on that one with anything for an assist. And this is going to give CLG top side Rift Herald. Yeah, they only had Tuesday who could potentially TP, and like you said, there was the 2v1 in the mid lane that made that difficult to do, so they instead try and opt for this Fang. Rift Herald. I don't know if they can get in here. Fang zoning, and they do have the TP by the gangplank to join in. Unbreakable goes down. They're still going to try to put the damage down through his armor. The reduction is going to be enough for now. Fang stays alive, and the fight can turn around. Tuesday finally gets the last punch in. Teleport now in for Cloud9, but it stops as CLG holds Rift Herald, grabs the eye and they're gonna make it out safe. Fallen Bandit with a little bit of a late TP there just yeah. in case, but does ensure their escape as C9 try to scare them off the Rift Herald, but CLG are able to take the fight, find two kills, and still grab the Rift Herald. So a great answer for the play that C9 had forced down in the bot lane. Really close fight there as uh, a number of things could have broken a little bit differently and made this a lot easier. Fang. Uh, it's going to go in, trying to bait, but the TP is not coming in, so they're actually not trying to contest this. They're just trying to stall out. Uh, bit of an overlap on the chain CC, but Keith has a great alt here with this lens to instantly get out after uh, getting cast back. So he's able to kite this out a little bit, forcing Tuesday to commit the flash to find that second kill. Ooh. And then from here, it looks like he might be in trouble getting out, great but by with the Trundle Pillar getting dropped, there's no more hard CC, and he can take the Galio ultimate out. CLG instantly start using that to push down the mid lane as well. Waste no time, and Cloud9 saying, a little abrupt, we can definitely put our bodies in front of this one, but it might uh -oh. cost them Fang again. The ult's still down, and he is also up and down after just spawning. Yeah, CLG hit squad, all four tanks rolling deep there to ch chain CC the Alistar, make sure they can find that kill easy. And with that, they may probably have secured enough control to finish off that mid lane turret. Wow. What a turnaround from what we thought would happen for the jungle and mid Tuesday now, 3-0-2, with Wiggly at 2-0 and 3. Who has been the combo this game? It's definitely that mid lane and jungler. Looking around the map, the rest of CLG feeling good, and it's, it's not that they're not making mistakes. Everybody's kind of either on par or also kind of making their own plays, which is helping a lot. Yeah, both, both teams have done a good job of answering plays on other sides of the map. When CLG had that triple TP play, they, of course, get their own yeah. turret, or excuse me, a lot of CS leads. And then there's a situation where there's a gank top, they pressure bot, they have to TP out. And then mm -hmm. finally, again, here with the kill on GP, 
or the kill on Cho'Gath, excuse me, they instead focus down the Rift Herald. So both teams playing the map very well and not letting uh, the commitments by the other team go unpunished. And I like what CLG is doing here. Every time they kind of move a lane or do something new, they add something to it. Yeah, Fallen Bandit's been up there with Wiggly a lot. So when Fallen Bandit's there, you could expect Wiggly. But now it's Tuesday up there, and his first path up was with Wiggly, which may have caught Shiro off guard saying they'll leave him. But no, Wiggly's here. It's not going to be Fallen Bandit this time, and you're still in a 2v1. Shiro will go down the Counter Logic Gaming Academy. Really nice punish by CLG there. After that top side control they had for the Rift Herald, there was never a time where C9 reestablished vision yeah. control, which gives them the path up there. Ooh. Felt that one a little chilly here on the side of the caster desk. The CLG does save their turret. They do get themselves goal side. And it looks like this will funnel into an Ocean Drake if they can do it fast enough. They may not. They got pushed off a Rift Herald. So it looks like it'll be just Scuttle for now. Yep, a little tough, both uh, with Shiro dead for 10 more seconds. They don't want to take a 4v5 as well as the fact his TP would be down upon respawn. Yep. So makes sense. They can continue pressuring around this mid lane turret that is about a breath away from falling over. <laughs> so they're not going to get too greedy for it. Those are one of the ones you hope go down in like a protection fight. You're on the second turret, you're on the wards inside the jungle. It's a nice domino effect. CLG playing way too smart for that though. They protect it as much as they can, but they probably won't give up their lives for it. 20 minutes on the clock, eight to two. Just about a 2,000 gold lead. A C9 is skirting around a lot of this danger and finding small advantages to keep themselves very close to CLG's lead. It's one of those games where you see the scoreboard and you hope the gold lead is more in CLG's favor, mm -hmm. but because of the Gangplank getting the extra gold and the CS advantages yeah. pretty much across the board, you can kind of tell that CLG isn't as far ahead as they might think they are and they're gonna have to recognize that situation because sometimes you know you don't see the scoreboard in game when you're playing you don't know what the actual goal yep. is you might think oh we're killing them we're two and eight we got an extra turret like we should we should be up like three or four k gold and in reality it's, it's one and a half it's, it's tough as a player to recognize the difference and it is it, it is important to know the difference because we've asked we've we've asked players at the end of the game even in games they were up five or six at the end we're like did you guys know you were that far up when you weren't ending? And they're like, no, we actually thought we were really even. But like, no, you guys were like 6K up for 10 minutes. You were just like, what are you doing? Yeah. That's so a you're right. They, they almost don't know unless it's just kind of a complete wash. Right. And like, you react a lot more to the pressure. But that's a subjective thing. So yeah. it can be tough to know if they're ahead or not. Because here's C9 fourth thing. Looking very hungry, but not a lot of commitment out of the rest of the team. Fallen Bandit hitting that Righteous Glory, and they're going to speed forward. It's always about the Alistar, but are they mad for going for the cow? In goes Golden Glue, and he's able to slice and dice two members of Counter Logic Gaming. Fallen Bandit has to back out now, and CLG have chosen the wrong priority. Yeah, it's a two for one in favor of C9 right now, but a lot of health bars are low. Golden Glue and Shiro both below 20% HP. Makes it difficult for either team to find an objective after that fight. Instead, people are going to break away for the minion waves, but a really nice collapse by C9 there to punish CLG for blowing all their cooldowns on finishing off the 0 and 4 now support. A yeah, close fight that C9 picked. Ooh. Bang is just on the only guy they want over and over. I mean, you have so many ways of locking him down. That's the thing about Alistar. You get hit by one ability, and your ult gives you the cleanse. And then there's four more yeah, abilities. Boom, boom, boom. You still continue not to move and die slowly. But that was a situation where uh, Otto was not actually able to really get into that fight after all that yeah. he came down. And so we're talking about this kind of 4-1 protect the Ash comp. They actually do a great job doing it here. You see they stop Sven's Garen from being able to get in and threaten him and actually force Sven to flash out. Then Fallen Bandit re-aggroes onto Fang, who's just going to tank all this damage. Look at Otto over the wall. He can't get in there with that TP coming in. And Golden Glue is oh. actually able to run wild in the team fight and get a two-man ultimate off, which is a little hard to do, actually. So he's able to grab those kills very quickly. And the 3-0 Akali, if he keeps finding kills in yeah. situations like that, it's going to be a, a bit of a problem in the side lane very shortly. They had a beautiful five-point strike there. Passive hit, boom, all. One, two. Very nicely done. You can see just the damage. Did they match damage? Oh, I thought they matched damage. I was like, number switch. Yeah, the, just a little, <laughs> a little bit. bit of dyslexia coming in. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. He'll be safe on that one. Sven Garen steps up and says, let's fight. Subjugate onto Wiggly. Over the wall goes Golden Glue. Heroic entrance coming in. Golden Glue just oh. gets out. His Fang knocks a few up under the turret. Auto is low, and Golden Glue needs to get out of the turret range. Tuesday is huge. Look at the health bars. Still healthy enough to fight here on the side of CLG. 
as they are just armored up and ready to go punch for punch. Oh my god, if GP had his ultimate available there, I think oh, he came up in beautiful. the middle of the fight. I think that's a dead auto and backline, but there was just no one else helping Golden Glue who isolated that backline. It was a these are the kinds of fights I'm talking about, Riv. You have one team trying their hardest to kill one target and everyone else trying to keep them alive. No one dies as both teams uh, kind of did what they were looking to do, but just not quite clean enough. Back to back as they are heading to base. Everybody on their own respective sides here, keeping it safe. The auto heading towards the mid lane says, yeah, I think this is finally the time mid goes down. I got to give credit to CLG. They did put up numerous fights yeah. with that being at that last breath of health. Yeah, it was tough, but after it drops, back to dead even gold. Yeah, very much so. And now we can see who is kind of on the path, on the routes of where they need to be placing this, these wards. Felon Bandit already says, well, if they can now get into our jungle, we want that pink ward vision a little bit deeper on our side. Cleaning up waves and giving themselves protection, CLG pushing out slowly until they can get another one of these engages. And I just saw, I did not realize previously, Ooh. but Wiggly with the Proto Belt on the Gragas. It's an interesting choice. Uh, it's, you know, the kind of standard build is you go for the Runic Echoes into full tank. He gets a little bit more AP and playmaking potential. To they have that a lot of AP. That's interesting. Yeah, they already have what feels like enough AP, but maybe they just want a little bit more damage. We're talking about the concerns about the Ash being the only threat a little True. bit. The Galio does start ticking up in damage as you start getting more AP, but... Also, if you can get on the Zaya as that Gragas, bye-bye. Yeah, definitely looking for some, some pick-off potential. And I think the other thing you can say is they really don't need more tankiness. You know, are no. you really going <laughs> to... Are you going to look at that Gragas and say, ooh, a little bit of extra resistant HP would have been the difference? I mean, you already have... A Cho'Gath, a Braum, and a, a Galio. I, I think it's, it's fine to over-index a little <laughs> bit more into the AP here, but it's a, it's one of those things where situationally you have to be aware. You probably should not do this every game, but I can understand it here. Absolutely. Hopefully be able to be a part of the damage instead of the rest of the bruisers on your team is the idea for Wiggly, and he is definitely going to be doing quite a bit of damage. Kindle Gem there as well to spit out a few more spells with cooldown and some HP as they start being a little more tempered in their engages, a little more uh, knowing they don't have that vision to walk forward, so they're being cautious. Yeah, I think uh, C9's done a good job of kind of wrestling vision control away from CLG here. Tuesdays doesn't know if this is safe or not. He's respecting it for now as mm -hmm. Golden Glue kind of plays up which shows his hand, but there's Sven Scarin just kind of playing defense and zoning duty, stopping them from threatening anything Really good to protect Blue. that? You're a boss. Protected ward. I respect that as a support. I mean, it's tough. They don't have any vision on the side of CLG Academy. They have only a couple of wards down, so they never know how many extra men are coming. Anybody was, could be around. Was the it wall. just Sven or was Fang and Keith coming up as well? And so you see them kind of give up that turret, and there it is. C9 Ooh. grabbing the gold lead back, 1,000 up after that very nice vision control and macro play. And the fights were happening so quick, too, when CLG had that spike around 15 minutes. It was like, how is C9 going to stop this? We just saw them temper a fight, and their win with two kills, they're still walking away from CLG. It seems to be happening before our eyes right now. Auto Wiggly staying together. Wiggly hasn't been able to affect lanes now by himself, and they aren't finding those fights for him to push everybody forward. It's very difficult for the Gragas to find an angle if they can't get their vision control down. And so if C9 has wards all up in the top side, you saw what happened. Wiggly tried to Predator up there, and then there's already yeah. a Trundle in the brush. So instead, they're going to focus down this Cloud Drake, kind of grab it for free. Only the second one in the game. Uh, not super high priority objectives at this point, as you're expecting the 5v5s. Patiently waiting in the wings, and you're seen. <laughs> it just comes over from the Scryer's Bloom. And this is CLG's attempt now, just a few minion waves forward. They can start moving up their wards and encroaching that vision into a better position and hopefully get more engages onto Cloud or onto CLG. Yeah, onto Cloud9, I was gonna say, but maybe not onto Fang now. Having a little bit more resistances for himself with Mike's Vow. The team might be able to turn fast enough with the power of Golden Glue. That's also a lot of power in the hand of Tuesday, so I cannot wait to see our next fight. Woo. Keith almost forced to use the Feather Storm, still is slowed by concussive blows, but it looks like he's going to be able to get just out of range. One, two, three, four, and the kitchen sink from Counter Logic Gaming. The follow-up is intense.
And there we go. We see CLG kind of getting frustrated with all the yeah. side lane pressure that C9 has. They say, you know we're what? We're, this. we're running it down mid. You have a lot of defensive tools on Zaya. You don't have enough to outplay three tanks running at you in an ass shooting an arrow. So a really nice play by CLG finding their opportunity when it felt like there were not that many presented to them. And I know a lot of people are going to look at Keith and say, why didn't you flash? Well, it's kind of an overcommitment if you do. I think you're dead no matter what there, and he's prioritizing having his flash for next time when it might actually save his life. At their point, they're flashing for you anyway. Yeah, I mean, if, if you flash, Wiggly flashes and throws his ult again. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm not quite sure what ability he was yeah, supposed yeah. to flash to get out of there. Maybe there was one, but... That felt just kind of like three tanks all using all their abilities to finish you off. I don't the, know what you want to do. In that instance as well, these players know it was four to nine for quite some time. So you're looking at a full ability, full summoner spell fight. So he knows there's four flashes right behind him ready. Right, I mean, like, does the right thing, sidesteps the ultimate, is just running as far as he can, ults that ultimate, but then here's Predator Gragas with the proto belt. So Feels you good. shoot him, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. And then here you have the one. flash silence, now you can't flash in response. Like. <laughs> I don't know what Keith was supposed to flash there. Uh, spread his 2k wings and fly away. Yeah, that would have been nice. He tried spreading them for a little bit, but unfortunately yeah. that bird doesn't fly for long. <laughs> Clipped and down. Cleanse is down now, so he's got to be a little bit more careful. Does not have the money or space in that inventory for a Quicksilver Sash to be in at any time soon either. As we come up on 30 minutes in the game, just 400 gold separates these two teams, and they will jockey for Baron. A, pick, a big uh -oh. hit on the Golden Glue. An instant death here as he comes out of Zanias, unless he can flash over the wall. The vision is still there, and that's the shot from Otto to take him down. 4v5 as they start on to Baron, as it's going to be a 4v3 with Shiro pushing in the bot side. The teleport comes in as his cannon barrage is called from the ship in the distance. The damage now on to Sven Skarin. He goes down as Phil follows. And it's going to be the rest of C9 low. Two more drop, one for each side. C9 is not going to win this fight. Baron is going to be in the hands of Counter Logic Gaming. And Wiggly drinks two more under the table with his Kragus. The ace for CLG comes through after turning off the Baron. C9 felt like they couldn't give that up, so they teleport Shiro in. Boom. They try and AoE them, but the front line is way too massive, and Auto is untouched. So while you're trading CC and cooldowns, you're hoping the Baron damage is doing something. There's about 15,000 collective HP on the side of CLG. Jeez. It's way too difficult to chew through that front line and get to auto. It really is. I'm actually trying to counter right now. Yeah, how much how much HP is there? But you, you count. I'll talk about this right here. I mean, this is the right play by C9, and, and they start getting people low. Phil is getting low. Wiggly's getting low. Tuesday's getting low. There's the stopwatch. He's going to stay alive for a little bit longer. And during that time, Otto is untouched. The Baron's not doing enough to really scare him. And then they can finally get onto Keith. And a nice flash body slam follow finds the double kill. Really impressive stuff by Wiggly, making that proto belt look good. You're right. It's just about 15,000 15, HP. That's not with Otto, by the right, way. Right. Yeah, that's the front line. You have 15,000 <laughs> HP to kill before you get to him. Look at Otto, he's doing 11,000 himself. Boom. <laughs> Look at how much damage they did. They did 20,000 damage that team fight. <laughs> That's going through lockets and shields. Yep. Has anyone got a stone plate? You know, like, it's insane what you're expected to try and do. There, yeah, there's a stone oh, plate on the Cho'Gath. Wiggly, 10, uh, 10 uh, pages on his book. Oh, he's got a Mage Eyes. Yeah, he mind. has bought a Mage Eyes. He's he is committed to this. Good. He's super committed. I mean, 419 to his 4-1-8 and eight mid. And who's above him? Who is on either side of Wiggly? A 4-1-5 and five Cho Gap as well. Talk about getting your lanes going throughout the game and then promoting more fights that everybody can take part in. 32 minutes on that clock. 15 to 6 as this one just took a turn for the worse for Cloud9. CLG is feeling great as they start to pressure the bottom side of C9's map. And this is where it gets scary for them. They want this Akali kind of split. She doesn't do very much in a four yeah. or five man trying to defend against the terror. You know, GP and Zyre are actually going to be way better wave through than your mid laner in this situation. And so you see them trying to zone this one, but they're actually going to try and push them back. More of a zoning ultimate by them there. So they have so many buttons to go, they can just keep pressing them. They're dodged out. They are going to be able to take down Shiro immediately. They're standing and dancing in the cannon barrage coming in from Shiro as they continue to fight a heroic entrance just to make it look good as CLG look to put the finishing touches on game one of this world final series for Academy. The inhibitor turret's going to fall. The Baron minions are supporting CLG as they enter the base. And with 33 
three minutes on the clock. Two Nexus turrets and Svenskeren are the only thing that stand in between CLG and the Nexus. He runs for the hills. The teleport for Tuesday comes in to show off as they must be feeling amazing after this first game run. Eyes on the Nexus, the damage is in. CLG Academy takes game one. On red side as well, able to find the draft that gave them all the tools they needed, an overabundance of tools you saw in that last yeah. team fight. They were able to miss two art ultimates and still pick that fight and charge forward to find the game winning fight after a really impressive Baron play. And CLG looking really fierce in game one. Super fierce and not tempered in their actions as well. A few of the fights didn't work out, but that, that didn't make them say, we don't do that again. It says, we know what we did wrong, we adapt now, and we just do it better. And it was actually really awesome to see that if they couldn't get one thing, they did it another way. Yeah, I think that's that's ultimately what it came down to, was they had so many options to do one thing. It's, it's not like, oh, we can split, yeah. or we can do this. Like, our team, team fights, and we have about eight ways of starting that. And even though the game stalled out and went even, when you have that many opportunities and the enemy team split out, eventually you find that one onto Keith, you blow some of his cooldowns, and then you force around the Baron, and if they don't contest with five, like, you're going to turn off. And that was yep. really impressive uh, kind of understanding of their win conditions as well as just using the triple TP so well early on. Absolutely. And, man, are their eyes on that jungle matchup now. Wiggly oh, coming yeah. out so strong and Spence Karen attending Worlds, being that veteran, definitely going to need to step up. I mean, this was a, a game where a lot of those scripts flipped a little bit where Tuesday sure. had a great game. Wiggly's beating up on his former mentor. Uh, the GP not really working out against the Cho'Gath. Everything uh, came up CLG. Absolutely. So for more on that CLG Academy win, let's send it back to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Riv. Great cast of the day so far. Let's talk about this game, CounterLogic Gaming Academy, swinging out of the gates, a team that was 19-3 and in overall game record this split, 19-4. and Now CLG giving the clap down to C9 Academy. Draft from the screen. That surprised me. How about you guys? Uh, the thing that I... I thought was surprising is they gave over the Akali, but the more I thought about it, it's like Tuesday honestly, honestly looks best on like champions that are going to do their job uh, later in the game, or at least I would say are pretty neutral, and they don't have to pop off. The Corky, the Galio that he played in the semifinals, I think these are really good champions for him because it's hard for somebody to get the better of you when you're playing these champions. And I feel like being able to just make Golden Glue, get a matchup where he's like, okay, I'm going to pick the Akali. You give over the Braum and Gragas for it. They get some really good kind of, I would say, a skeleton structure going for their composition where you already have a good solid jungler and then you have a really good support that can face check later and help with vision control and engaging. And then you pick the Galio later, which just makes it so you just have to defend people and help that damage come through. So I actually really like the draft from CLG because C9 kind of took the bait, I would say. Right, I would agree that uh, I do like CLG's draft. And one thing that I think is interesting about CLG's draft and kind of speaks to the identity of their team is if you look at those champions, I don't think CLG drafted a single like selfish champion. Mm -hmm. Almost all of those champs play for the team. And we really saw it this game with just the way that they played, uh, even starting off with like the bot lane counter gank, which like when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, CLG is 100% like dead on this play, but they turned it around through just like really solid team play. So as far as drafts go, I think that CLG was a little magic heavy. Oh, well, here's the play. Yeah, this Check is the one where first. I remember walked up and you're like, oh, Otto's dead here. And then immediately Otto starts walking the opposite direction. Towards the teleports. In, dipping into the brush that they hadn't warded because they saw the ward go into the other one. Goes over, there's double teleports coming down, Wiggly's coming down, ends up being a three for one overall. And this is the lane that we talked about earlier where Keith alongside Fang, this is kind of the newest synergy to the team for C9 when they've been swapping everything around. And it really did show the teamwork there from CLG to start pressuring that bottom side. I have to give huge props to CLG because I played a lot of League of Legends in my day, and really? I would never expect that play to have gone CLG's way. Like, just the amount of trust that you need as a team, because like if you look at the waves, Cho'Gath TP'd out of a wave that's pushing to him. Like, that feels bad as a top laner. Tuesday just TP'd out of a, like, normal mid wave. Yep. And one thing that's kind of interesting is that both Shiro and Golden Glue are playing champions that don't have CC pre-6, so they can't actually stop the TP, even if you TP in their face. Yep. So I think that was a really, really well executed, executed play by CLG, and it's hard to even fault C9 for that one, because like if you start a gank with onto an Ash with a two-man Alistair combo into a Trundle, you're probably expecting it to get the kill. Yeah. But um, just really, really good teamwork by CLG to turn that one around. Yeah, and then the, the reason that I don't expect it as well is 
you're actually ditching two scaling solo laners, giving them free lanes with the Akali and the Gangplank, and then your TP is down. There's a, now a TP advantage for the GP who has ultimate. You're worried about the counterplay that'll come out when he hits level six or he TPs to another lane, but they, they don't do that, right? He doesn't have this big play that comes around, and it's because they were fine with ditching that lane, which was so interesting to me that a lot of top laners, like you said, very selfish about their waves, and they wouldn't give it up because that's sure. free gold sitting there. Yeah. They essentially got like a 300 gold kill. 900 gold, yeah. Right? And it's like, okay, well, how much gold were in those minion waves? How much experience were in those minion waves that then got missed by those laners? Yeah. And that's what a lot of people consider, but the team play is really the thing that CLG have in frame. Sure. And so, yeah, the game was super interesting because, of course, as the top lane and mid laner TPs out, both Golden Glute and Shiro get CS lead, so they're up and from the entire game. Uh, Klana actually still gets first turret bot lane anyway, despite the gank going badly for them. So all three lanes in their own ways are winning, and they're in, in some individual metrics. We saw the gold graph a minute ago, where it kept going back and forth, 1.5k either way for about 30 minutes. And then finally it broke open. Finally, uh, CLG keeping up in the game, staying up in kills, finally get the one team fight that really caught them out. And this already comes in after they've already picked off Golden Glue, but uh, winning the 5v4. Yeah, this was a pretty interesting team fight because a lot of times, uh, if you're starting Baron, you don't want to end up in this situation where you're actually like pressed into the back of the pit. Like you saw Ash's position there. I know that most AD carries get super, super uncomfortable if you're yeah. starting a fight like that because you have nowhere to go. Like you're just you're getting hit by Baron. You're in the back of the pit. Sometimes your whole team ditches you. Or you, you run towards a Cho'Gath or something, and you're like, this is gonna go well for me. Yeah. So. Uh, I really like the way CLG played. I feel like I have to keep coming back to just their teamwork because I don't feel like they won this game through any like individual plays per se. Like no one just completely smashed their counterpart. Maybe Wiggly. That's the only person. I mean, better jungler always wins. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Especially for the, in the most semis. part, uh, <laughs> maybe not that one. But um, yeah, they just their their teamwork and coordination was was really on another level right yeah. there. Yeah, I agree they were really, really impressive overall. Uh, just heard, CLG has picked red side for game mm -hmm. two, so we're going to have another series. I feel like this is having a lot in North America. A lot of... Where yeah. we're not switching sides. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people like red side lately, yeah. which is weird because blue side has been considered favored forever, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, and right now it feels like the only things that you kind of have to ban are maybe Rakan on red side, and then you can throw the Kindred up there too if you want, but it's no like triple ban. Those things are pretty flexible. You yep. can have trades happen too if you leave them both up. Uh, and Akali seems to be more of a blue side ban right now because a lot of people aren't comfortable first picking it. And that's why I think they want to stay on red side because you know C9 aren't going to ban Akali and they might first pick it again. But I also think that if they don't first pick it, I don't think Tuesday's going to play it. Yeah. That's the thing is I don't think he's going to play it. I don't I, think it's a style either. And I actually think that you try to get rid of the Galio this time as uh, C9. Sure. So that he can't neutralize Golden Glue, who's one of the strongest members of that team. Yeah. I, I think that uh, I really expect to see a Galio ban if C9 wants to stick with the plan of first picking Akali because she's really strong in this meta, like no doubt. Golden Glue, he, he didn't play her bad by any means. He started three and zero, had a good CS lead in lane. But um, Galio has been one of those picks that's really good into it. So maybe we'll see C9 ban it and try the Akali again. But I think there are some other picks that do fairly decently into it. Like LeBlanc, I know it's a good matchup into Akali. Uh, some people like Ryze. Yeah. So we're gonna have to see how each team decides to uh, adjust their plan going into next game. Yeah, but my question is, why would you even have to pick the Akali yourself when you don't you don't have to worry about Tuesday picking it? Because I, sure. I don't think he's going to pick it. That's not a team-focused pick that CLG is talking about their teamwork. I say you leave the Akali up, try to get a better matchup for yourself, unless you think Akali is like the S tier right now. Because I think Tuesday plays a good rise. He plays a good Galio, and I think that if he's able to just go even in that matchup, then he's going to be more effective in fights. Sure. Well, for what it's worth, I think we did see Tuesday at least play a game of it last week. Either mm -hmm. way, uh, we are going to get ourselves into the next game very soon. CLG has started the series off with a win, and we'll see if Cloud9 Academy can bounce back in game two right after the break.